Justin Trudeau simply cannot continue to govern this country now that Canadians know what he has done. And that is why I am calling on Mr. Trudeau to do the right thing and to resign. Further, the RCMP must immediately open an investigation if it has not already done so into the numerous examples of obstruction of justice the former Attorney General detailed in her testimony. The testimony Canadians have just heard from the former Attorney General, Jody Wilson-Raybould, tells the story of a Prime Minister who has lost the moral authority to govern. A Prime Minister who allows his partisan political motivations to overrule his duty to uphold the rule of law. A Prime Minister who doesn't know where the Liberal Party ends and where the Government of Canada begins. And a Prime Minister who has allowed a systemic culture of corruption to take root in his office and those of his most senior Cabinet and Public Service colleagues. Like many of you, I listened carefully to the testimony of the former Attorney General. And like you, I was sickened and appalled by her story of inappropriate and frankly bordering on illegal pressure brought to bear on her by the highest officials of Justin Trudeau's government. All to let a liberal connected corporation off the hook on serious corruption charges. Before Ms. Wilson-Raybould's testimony, Canadians knew Justin Trudeau had engineered an unwanted, sustained and coordinated attempt to get Ms. Wilson-Raybould to change her mind and to stop the criminal trial of SNC-Lavalin. Today, thanks to Ms. Wilson-Raybould's testimony, we now know just how intense those efforts were. Ten meetings, and ten phone calls involving 11 senior government officials relentlessly targeting Ms. Wilson-Raybould over a four-month period with the sole objective of bullying her into bending the law to benefit a well-connected corporation. The details are as shocking as they are corrupt. Multiple veiled threats to her job if she didn't bow to their demands. Urgings to consider the consequences on election results and shareholder value above judicial due process. And reminders from Justin Trudeau to his Attorney General about his own electoral prospects should she allow SNC-Lavalin's trial to proceed. As Ms. Wilson-Rabel has so clearly articulated, the people Canadians entrusted to protect the integrity of our very nation were instead only protecting themselves and their friends. Let me close by saying that we have entered the final stages of Mr. Trudeau's government. He can no longer, and in good standing, with a clear conscience, lead this nation. As we enter a critical budget debate and with other pressing matters of public interest in need of action, Mr. Trudeau's cabinet must now find a way forward without him. And I urge them to do so. They have a duty to govern this nation, not help a disgraced Prime Minister hang on to power. But my message tonight is this. It shouldn't be this way in Canada. And it doesn't have to be this way in Canada. We should be a country where all are equal under the law. Where nobody, regardless of wealth, status or political connections is above the law and I believe we can be that country again.